Okay, good morning, guys. Uh, today is going to be Related Rates Day 2, which is obviously, hopefully it's obvious, Section 4.6 Day 2. And what I have written over here on the side, yesterday we did Related Rates Considering Circles and Spheres. Um, these are kind of different related rate shapes. There's more than this. And today we're going to do right triangles and cylinders. And we're holding off for cones tomorrow. Cones are the hardest ones of all, and you'll, you'll see why tomorrow. But, well, related rates. A kite is flying at a constant height of 300 feet. The wind is carrying the kite horizontally away at a rate, ooh, a rate, a rate, ooh, rates, at a rate of 25 feet per second. How fast must the string be let out when the kite is 500 feet from you to maintain a constant height. Hmm. Well, here we go. I'm going to make a diagram. Diagrams help. So, if I'm sitting right here, and, well, actually, I'm not going to go this route. I'm going to say, hey, okay, so I have a sweet little kite right here, and the kite is flying, and that kite is flying high, at a constant height of 300 feet. And that kite is away from me, and there is the string that connects the kite. So here is you, okay? And what this says is, the wind blows, the wind is blowing, and it's taking the kite over to here. And what happens, oh boy, what happens is that cute little kite is at the exact same height. So the kite is still 300 feet off the ground, and it's still from you. And now, here's the kite. Well, think about it. The kite is perpendicular to the ground. And <clears throat> what I see here is I see I have a right triangle that I'm working with. Okay, hence the first one for day two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this kite. And I don't need this big one, but just so just you see. Oh, that's ugly. Um, actually, I know what I want to do. I don't think that will work. So I'm going to make this one small. Well, no, I'm not. I'm going to keep the same height. So what I see here, here is going to kind of be, be my working triangle. 300 feet. Okay, that's constant, and I'm over here, and my kite is here. Here's my right triangle. Sorry, it's a terrible right triangle. But as I look at here, as I look at this, okay, both of these values, x, and I'm going to call this the length of my string over here, both of those values are changing. As the wind blows, I'm spooling string out, and it's pushing it horizontally, but 300 feet is constant, okay? And so as I'm looking here, I'm looking through my, <clears throat> looking through my, uh, all my, my goodies of information here. Okay, the kite is flying at a constant height of 300 feet. I can see that in my diagram. The wind is carrying the kite horizontally at a rate of 25 feet per second. That kind of means to me, if I labeled this x, that's telling me dx dt equals 25 feet per second. Okay, because the wind is blowing it perfectly horizontally. Okay, how fast must the string be let out? So as I'm spooling out string here, how fast, how fast, that's a rate. So it's saying find dl dt when the kite is 500 feet from you when l equals 500. Okay, this, this is, this is my moment in time. This is my moment is when L is at precisely 500 feet. Okay, that's my moment. 
So what I need to do to set up these related rates, anything in my diagram that is changing has to be listed as a variable, both X and L. So how can I relate both X and L to each other to write a related rates equation? Well, it's a right triangle. So I do know that X squared plus 300 squared has to equal L squared. There is old Pythagorean theorem because I got a triangle. Well, if I need to find dl dt given dx dt when l is 500, well, what do I got to do? Well, in calculus, we take derivatives. That's what we do. So the only way to get a dx dt and a dl dt is to differentiate my Pythagorean theorem equation with respect to t. Well, that's going to give me 2x times dx dt plus the derivative of 300 squared. Yep, it's constant. That's going to be zero. I don't have to write it, but I'm showing. That's a big thing. A lot of people are going to want to call that 2 times 300. Nah, no, 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 no. It's constant. This is a constant. So that derivative is going to be zero. And this is going to be 2L times DL dt. There is my related rates equation. So now... I'm going to find dl dt, so I'm solving, I'm solving for this, which means I need to know what x is, what dx dt is, and what l is. Okay, so what do we do? I'm going to say 2 times, oh, crumb, what is x? I'm really not sure. I don't have what x is written over here anywhere, but I do know dx dt is 25 feet per second, and that's going to equal 2 times L. L, what is L? L is 500 feet times dL dt is what I'm solving for, okay? How the heck do I find x? Oh, I get it. It's a Pythagorean theorem. Even better, if L equals 500, and this side's 300. How do I solve to find out what x is at the moment when l is 500? Hey, it's a Pythagorean triple. You can do x squared plus 300 squared equals l equals, uh, what would, ooh, that's not 300 squared. That would be, what, 90,000. It's going to be 400 feet. You can use Pythagorean theorem. If I know this is 500, this is 300. I can solve for that side using <clears throat> using the Pythagorean theorem. Nine times out of ten in this class, in these applications, there are going to be Pythagorean triples for you, which means this is 400 feet. Oh, now I can solve for DLDT. Now, now I can find out how I got to spool all this stuff out. And, you know, I can go straight into my calculator if I want to and solve for dl dt, or I can be sensible about this if I wanted to. What are you talking about? Well, I could look at this and I could take 2 times 400 times 25, and I could say, hey, that's going to be 20,000 feet squared per second equals, this is what? This is 1,000 feet solved for dl dt. And when I divide this side by my 1,000 feet, I know dl dt, hmm, well, how many times? Uh, 20,000 divided by 1,000, that's, that's 20 feet squared per second divided by feet. That's going to give me feet per second, okay? So I'm spooling it out at 20 feet per second. Now, what, what was I talking about when I said, I don't need a calculator. Well, if it were me, to be honest with you, I would picture my 2 times 500 over here. I wouldn't multiply it out. I'd say, hey, my 2's reduce. I could reduce both of these by 100. And my 5 can go into my 25 five times, then reduce my units. So it's just 4 times 5 to get my 20 feet per second. And I can get there that quick. Now, remember, 
the moment in time that they're talking about here, this is important, the moment of time is when the kite is 500 feet from you. That's our moment in time, okay? So that's a Pythagorean theorem example. Number four, okay? All we're doing today is we're doing examples three, four, and five. And I'm hoping to keep this as a relatively shorter video so you guys will have some time to work and maybe ask some questions. Anytime you run into a cone problem in, uh, in your homework, skip it. Cones are coming out tomorrow, okay? So now we're going to do a 17-foot extension ladder is leaning against a garage when its base starts to slide away on the frosty ground. By the time the base is 15 feet away from the house, it, the base, is moving at a rate, ooh, ooh, check it out, another rate of three feet per second. How fast, what rate, is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall at this moment? Well, what's the moment? Hmm. The moment, the moment is when base is 15 feet away from the house. I don't know. It's leaning against the garage and it's away from the house. I think both of those are supposed to be the garage. So I'm going against the garage. Slight typo in here, not a big deal. I'm going to say garage. Okay, so this is just organizing a little thing, a little bit of stuff. Notice I haven't labeled anything to my rates because I want to create a diagram. Diagrams help. The ladder problem, oh, this little dirty rat, it is a classic problem in calculus. And I just want to come back here and notice here this bottom, I labeled it X, not just because it's X. Uh, I, I could use A, B, and C to do this problem if I wanted, but typically, if you accustom yourself in calculus, any horizontal distance, they really like to label X, and any vertical distance, they really like to label Y. You can label them whatever you want, just so you know. However, don't get confused when you see X's and Y's for any horizontal or vertical distance, meaning over here, Okay, well, I'm looking here. Over here I have my garage. And I'm going to say, hey, here's my garage. And which means the garage is, is on the ground. Which means up here on the garage I do have my ladder. My ladder is leaning on the garage. So it's on the garage. And I do know, here's my ladder, and I do know my ladder is 15 feet. Well, my my garage is perpendicular to the house and if it or to the ground and if it's not you really want to have a conversation with your builder but what's actually happening here okay is as this top uh, i don't want to go that way i want to say as the base slides out obviously the top of the ladder slides down okay so that's what we're looking at here and get rid of those a second and i want to label these well like I said, and I'm kind of relabeling everything in my head here too, because here's my x distance, and this is going to be my y distance, because as my 15 foot ladder slides on the bottom, both x and y are both going to be changing. So what's going to happen is this little bugger is sliding down. So here could be my 15 feet. My ladder stays the same. However, the base is sliding, so that's that's really what's going on. And I know my base is sliding, and I know the top of the ladder is sliding down. Okay, so now I'm going to go back, and I am going to label any unknowns that I do know. Well, I labeled my 17-foot ladder leaning against the garage. The base starts to slide away. Okay, by the time the base is 15, so my moment is when x is going to equal 15 feet away from the house. Oh, wait a minute. By the time the base is 15 feet away, that's my moment. And that's what I said on the top, so that's when x is 15. 
okay? Uh, the base is moving at a rate of three feet per second. So if the base is moving at three feet per second, that means dx dt equals three feet per second. So the moment is when x is 15 feet. I know dx dt equals three feet per second. Okay, what else do we want to know? How fast, okay, so that's saying how fast find the rate, the top of the ladder, the top of the ladder, that's going to be find dy dt when I know how fast the base is sliding in the moment in time when the base is 15 feet away. But my, my ladder is not 15 feet, is it? No, oh, there we go. My ladder is 17 feet. That's why I stuttered here before. I'm like, what's going on here? That's not possible. My ladder is 17 feet long, sorry. My ladder is 17 feet. 17 feet is constant. So I have two changing values in here. X and Y, they are both changing value. 17 is constant. Well, I need to relate all of my variable quantities that are changing. And I need to relate them in an equation. Check it out. I drew a sweet triangle. Okay? Sweet triangle. So I'm going to say the equation I'm looking for is x squared plus y squared equals 17 squared. Okay, well, how am I going to get these dy dt's, dx dt's, and stuff in there? Well, I'm going to get those by taking the derivative with respect to time because, again, that's what we do in calculus. We, we find derivatives. Well, so as I'm cruising and bruising here, as I take this derivative with respect to time, this is going to be 2x times dx dt plus 2y times dy dt, because that dy dt, remember, that's just chain rule, equals derivative of 17 squared. I don't even have to do it. It's zero. I don't even need to know what 17 squared is. So now, this is what I'm finding. I'm solving for dy dt. Okay, well, how do I do that? Well, I plug in what I know. Well, what do I know? Well, I'm going to come back. I do know 2x. Well, what is my x? x, x happens to be my moment in time. x is 15 times dx dt. They gave me that. And this is, I'm going to put my units in here. This is feet. And this is going to be 3 feet per second plus 2 times y. What's y? Well, crumb, I don't know what y is. Well, I do. I know x squared plus y squared equals 17 squared. Okay. So what do I know? Well, at the moment, if x squared, or if x is 15, I know 15 squared plus y squared equals 17 squared y squared equals 17 squared minus 15 squared. So when I square root that, I find out y actually equals another Pythagorean triple. I think it's 8. So y must be 8. So I can solve to find that other length. Because the latter length stays the same. I'm always perpendicular to the ground, which means this here, I'm going to put my 8 feet here times dy dt, that's what I'm solving for, equals zero. Well, what am I going to do? Obviously, I'm going to write myself a sweet little equation. Well, this is going to be 60 feet squared per second equals negative 16 feet dy dt, right? And if I divide 60 by negative 16 feet, what does dy dt equal? And you can get there, I can say dy dt actually equals negative what? Negative 45, if I keep it in fraction form, 8 feet per second. And for those of you that are the decimal freaks, uh, I'm just going to drag that down to get a little bit more room. 
I could also say, if I wanted to, I could plump that into a decimal and dy dt actually equals negative, negative is right, 5.625 feet per second, and it really doesn't matter which one you get. And here, the, the neat thing about this is, because the top of the ladder is going down, my rate of change should be negative, showing it's going toward the ground, okay? That should make sense to you, hopefully. Now, as I'm cruising and bruising along here, this is saying, okay, well, if that's all good, said and good, what is the rate, ooh, ooh, at what rate is the area now of the triangle formed by the ladder and the wall and the ground changing at this moment? So this is saying, find dA dt. At this moment, it's the same moment. Remember, the moment in time we're talking about is the moment when, uh, what was our moment? Our moment was when x equaled 15, and dx dt also equaled 3 feet per second. Okay, but now I got to actually come back here. Now I got to think about, oh, this is a triangle. How do I find the area of a triangle? Well, if I use my variables, area equals one half base times height, correct? So if I use this in terms of my variables, I'm going to say my area equals one half x times y. And now, because x and y are the only variables changing, now I have to take the derivative of this thing, again, with respect to time. Derivative with respect to t. I am not allowed to plug in values for x or y or anything. I cannot replace a variable pre-derivative that is changing. Okay? The only thing that is constant in this problem is the 17. Okay? X and Y's change, therefore you can't substitute in for X or Y until you take the derivative. Ooh, how am I going to take this derivative? Well, this is dA dt equals what? Hmm, product. That means I have a U times V. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my constant on the outside and I'm going to say X is U, y is v, and I'm going to look at it just like this, which is the derivative of x, okay? What is the derivative of x? Derivative of x is going to be dx dt. Derivative of the first times the second, plus the derivative of the second, dy dt, times the first. And I notice I have a dx dt, a dy dt, an x, and a y, so I need to find out what do I all know. Well, I do have dx dt, I do have x, and if I had x before, remember, we were able to solve for y, so I know if x is 15 feet, I know y is 8 feet, and I also found out that at that same moment in the previous part, I solved and I said dy dt, actually, and it doesn't matter what you do, equals negative 45 eighths feet per second. Okay, so I actually do have all these variables that I can substitute in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug them in and chug them out. So I have dA dt equals one half times dx dt. That's 3 feet per second times y is 8 feet plus dy dt. What is my dy dt? My dy dt is negative 45 eighths feet per second times x. What is my x? 15 feet. So, what do I get here as I keep plugging and chugging along? Let's roll that down a little bit further. And as I keep plugging and chugging along, well, 
the ADT equals, what do I get? Well, I'm going to have one half times, I'm going to leave that half out there. Well, three times eight, that's 24 feet squared per second, right? Minus, minus, and what do I get over there? Uh, I'm going to go decimal on that, actually, or I can say 15 times 45. I think that's, I don't know what it is. 45, 15, 25, 22 is a 0, is a 5, and a, and a 4, 5, 7, 675. So I can say that's minus 675 eighths feet squared per second. And if I did these, I would go straight into my calculator and I would say the ADT. After I put them all together, uh, I'm going to get 24 minus that. It's ugly, so that's really 24 minus, if I went into my calculator, that's negative 84.375 times a half. I get negative 30.375. Feet squared per second. My unit should make sense. It's area. So I should have square units. And if I'm rounding to three decimal places, I'm not calling it negative 30.187, excuse me, 5. I'm calling it negative 30.188 feet squared per second. Okay? There's lots of different things they can ask you on this ladder problem. They can ask, how is the top of the ladder changing, the bottom of the ladder changing? You can also be asked, what is the rate of change of that triangle that's formed by the ladder, the wall, and the ground at, that, at a particular moment? The last thing people really freak out about is this last one. What is the rate of change of angle theta? Ooh, rate hmm, of angle. So that says find d theta dt when I know all of this stuff above, okay? So again, if I threw myself into my diagram, I have my ladder, my 17-foot ladder perpendicular. I know here's my x, here's my y. The, <coughs> excuse me, theta is the angle between the ladder and the garage. So there's my theta. Oh, I made an alpha. Boom, boom. Theta is right there. So when I'm relating, because x's and y's are changing, so as the ladder slows down, theta is getting bigger, right? So if theta is getting bigger, I know in the end, d theta dt must be a positive value because it's getting bigger. Okay, well, how do I relate these? Hmm, hmm, got to think back to my trick. I can do it, I can do it three different ways. Actually, I can do it six different ways if I really wanted to, but I'm going to say, well, we have the sine of theta. The sine of theta would equal what? Opposite over hypotenuse. I could say the cosine of theta. Cosine equals what? Adjacent over hypotenuse. I could also use the tangent because the tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Which one looks the nicest to use? Just out of curiosity or just for, to set you forward, I totally would not use this one because I have a quotient right here that I'm going to be solving for. Over here, I would use cosine or sine. Does it matter which one I use? Absolutely not. I don't know, I just go straight to the sine. So really, and I could use either one of these, but think of this, the sine of theta actually equals 1 17th x. Because the variable is in the numerator, it's 1 17th times x. So what do I got to do? I got to take the derivative with respect to time. I don't know what that's all about. I'm not calling. 
So now I got to take the derivative of this. Well, what's the derivative of sine? That would be cosine theta times chain rule d theta dt equals, well, what's the derivative of 1 17th x? That would be 1 17th times dx dt, wouldn't it? Okay, well, here we go. We're on the run. So d theta dt, that's what I'm solving for, okay? d theta dt equals 1 17th dx dt. Do I know what dx dt is? I think we do know what dx dt is. That was all the way up here. They gave us that in the very beginning, didn't they? Yes, dx dt is 3 feet per second. So that I did know. And dx dt, 3 feet per second. So that's going to be times 3 feet per second. Okay. What's the cosine of theta? Well, what the, how the heck, the heck am I supposed to know what that is? Well, remember, what's our moment that we were talking about? The moment is when x was 15, wasn't it? So if x was 15, I knew y was 8, which means I know the cosine of theta is going to be 15 over 8. Correct? So I hope I'm doing that right. Uh, no, it's not. That would have been the sine. We want cosine. It's 8 over 17. And get the right one because cosine is adjacent hypotenuse. So cosine is going to be 8 17th. And so what do I get here? Well, here's where I'm going to extend. I can say, well, d theta dt equals, well, this is 3 17 on that side, right? And if I'm dividing by 8 17 that's really multiplying by 17 eighths, which those go away. So I know d theta dt equals what? Hmm. Three eighths and three. What are my units? What do my units have to be on this? Well, radians per second. Radians per second. Okay. Well, what am I looking at? Well, theta here, this is feet over feet. So those units reduce out of there. Where the heck does the radian come into play? Well, if I think about this back in the pre-calc days of trig, okay, this is the center of my circle, right? And this is the point on my circle, and this is my circle that goes all the way around. So if I think of this 1 17th that has nothing on it, although I drew my circle poorly, okay, this is essentially one radius in 17 feet. So my feet reduce in units and I get radians per second. Now, if I wanted to get crafty and put that in terms of degrees, okay, you're never in degrees in this class. You're almost always in radians unless they tell you you're in degrees. Well, how do you change radians into degrees? Well, I have to. I would have to multiply that by what? Uh, we'd have to introduce pi into it. So it'd be pi over 180, I believe. And then we could get it into degrees. But you don't have to go to degrees. We could say there it is, radians per second. Okay? And now we have one last one to do here. And then we're done. Sorry, this is getting longer than I thought it would be. How fast, what is the rate, does the water level drop when a 12 centimeter diameter, so I know diameter equals 12 centimeters. Ooh, that's, that's a lot of M's there. It's a lot of humps in an M centimeters, okay, in a diameter cylindrical tank is drained, it's drained at a constant rate, ooh, ooh, of three liters per second. So there's a conversion we need to know here because this is centimeters, okay, they're going to give you these conversions, which three liters, three liters is, a, each liter is a thousand milliliters, and a milliliter is equal to a cubic centimeter, Okay, well, there we go. They're coming across, but here, here's what we're looking at. We're looking at a cylindrical tank. And I have a radius. 
And what's going on here at the bottom of this tank, we actually have a pump that's pumping out water. Yeah? The water's coming and it's got a spout, and this is a pump, okay? This isn't free dropping because if it were free dropping or free, I don't know, free draining, if I could call it that, okay, it, 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 it's going to actually, it wouldn't be a constant rate, so that's how I know this is a pump. So this is going to be a pump of some sort. And what do I know? Well, because I'm talking cubic, Okay, we're talking volume. I know the volume of a cylinder equals pi r squared h. Okay, now that's that's the formula they would give you. Well, now I got to think of okay, I have volume. Well, I don't have the radius. Oh, I do have the radius. So r would equal six centimeters, wouldn't it? And think about this. What what is changing? So as this thing has water in it, as the level is dropping. Does my radius ever change? Well, if this is a cylinder, the radius never changes. So radius is constant. The radius is constant in a cylinder. The radius is not constant in a cone. That's what makes the cones harder tomorrow. So if my radius is constant, I can rewrite this volume function as 36 pi h, right? But I do know uh, what, what, what do I know? Okay, how fast does the water level drop? Well, water level drop, this is saying find dv dh, right? No, dv dh, what the heck are you talking about? Water level dropping, that's the height of the water, so it's saying find dh dt, I don't even know how I got that other one, when, what do I know? Mm -hmm when r is six centimeters and it's being drained at a constant rate of 3,000 cubic centimeters, well that means dv dt equals negative 3,000 centimeters cubed and it has to be negative because it's being drained, which means it's going down, which in the end, hopefully, if we're finding dhdt, as I'm draining this tank, the height is going down, my dhdt better be negative as well. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take my function, my equation that's relating uh, the values that I know, and I'm going to take the derivative with respect to time. So I get dv dt equals 36 pi h. Now oh, that's going to be 36 pi times dh dt, notice the height is a linear measure with respect to the volume of a, 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 of a cylinder because the radius never changes, it's constant. So then I'm going to plug in what I know, negative 3,000 centimeters cubed per second, and I forgot my per second over here, sorry, equals 36 36 pi, right? And I'm solving for my dh dt. So dh dt is going to equal negative 3,000 centimeters cubed per second. And what do I have inside there? 36 pi what? That's going to be square inches, isn't it? Pi r squared. Because that's going to be area. So these are really inches squared, so my height, I'm going to divide this by 36 pi inch centimeters squared, all right? And what do I get? Well, that's where I would go to my calculator, and I would say dh dt equals, I'm going to go to, if I reduce this and I want to be exact value, well, what would I do? I'd say, I'd say both of those go by 2, so it would be negative Actually, three comes out, so that'd be a thousand over what twelve, and then I can take another four out of there. That would be negative uh, two fifty over three, so I could call that negative two hundred and fifty over three pi centimeters per second. And if I wanted the decimal, 
I would slam that and say dh dt. Be careful when you type this into your calculator, though. You better use the control divide, because if you type in negative 250 divided by 3 times pi, you're going to get the wrong answer. The same way if you type in negative 3,000 divided by 36 times pi, without using the fancy control divide fraction, you're going to get the wrong answer. And if I put this in, 26.526 centimeters per second is going to give me my rate of change of the height. Okay? And I would go through and I would show you why it's wrong, but I'm not going to do that because I'm already 40 minutes into the video and we want to be done. So after this, you should be able to do a bulk of your problems in the homework, so you should be able to get rolling on that. And tomorrow we will talk about cones, and we'll do a couple of them because they're tough. Have a good day.